Hey there, welcome to my weekly messages. I'm Jalela Starr. Today the topic is all about DNA and this article that a good friend of mine sent me just recently, which I got to tell you really made me happy because what it basically did was it said scientifically that they now have proven that uh, DNA, that the DNA work that I've been doing, uh, the DNA recoding, the re realignment, reconnection, and activation of the 10 dormant DNA strands, actually is, it, it works. And, the, and what it's basically saying is they have now scientifically proven that DNA can be altered through language. And it doesn't matter what language it is. They said that DNA is the basis for all languages. So there was two things that I got out of that that I wanted to share with you, which I think will be very exciting to many of you. Number one, long time ago, the Nibiruans, when they first started connecting with me, they said to me that uh, they confounded the languages back around 3400 BC at the time of the Tower of Babel. And there was a reason for that. And that was that they would be able to slow down our technological evolution so that our spiritual evolution could catch up Therefore, we would not end up uh, destroying ourselves because we were like uh, kids with dynamite. The second thing was that it kept us from being um, used because we were kind of naive. You know, we're like little kids because we were a young species. And there was all these very sophisticated uh, galactic neighbors out there who were trying to get us embroiled in their wars because we were like the little geniuses. We were the prodigies and they were going to use us to their advantage. And that was happening at the time of Babel. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but because I wrote about it in Where the Nibirans, um No, the Mission Remembered book, too. So you can get the whole story in that book. But what they did was they confounded the languages or they confused them so that we would have multiple languages and would not be able to communicate with each other as easily as we did. Before that, we not only spoke the same language, we all could speak numerous languages. And the reasons why, I'm not going to go too far into detail about this, the Nibiruans are not just one species. There are multiple species. They're like a, uh, a galactic United Nations uh, of many different worlds represented on Nibiru. So the gods, if you will, the ancient gods of um, Sumeria, who, if you go back and do your research, those were the gods uh, that their stories came down as the, as the books of the Old Testament. They were the, basically the stories from the creation uh, about the ancient Sumerian gods. And God used to be plural, gods, in the, uh, in the oldest, before the King James Version of the Bible, all the way back to the Syrian Bible, which is 2,000 years old, God was gods. It was plural, which meaning the ancient Sumerians or the Nibiruans, uh, which is their home world name. Anyway, uh, about to get too far into that, back to the point. It was about DNA. They told us that they confounded the languages. But we did, we did have the ability to speak all the different languages. And the reason why is because we are not, we were not created by one species. We were created by a species that represented numerous groups. And therefore, we had the DNA of all the different races within us. That's why they called us the living library of DNA codes. We have all the different races codes. Therefore, we have all their languages. So our DNA is a combination of all these languages. Now, isn't it interesting that now science has proven that you can change DNA through language? It is basically a biological Internet is what it is. Now, that leads me to the next thing, which is about changing DNA through language. Language is what we use uh, in combination with emotion or thoughts to create emotion. And we have now known for a long time, thanks to work by Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief, that it is through word, through, through feelings or emotions, the thoughts in, in motions, thoughts charged by feelings, that DNA has been proven to be altered. Well, this group just goes even further with that. So then I wanted to share with you Another piece I put together, you know, years ago they gave us a formula of compassion, which is a tool, a higher dimensional tool to be able to transmute 
anger, shame, guilt, blame, resentment, all that that's stuck in our, our emotional baggage into the frequency of compassion. And they prove, they prove that the only frequency that alters DNA, in other words, from carbon to crystalline, you can alter it in other ways, but to, to change it from carbon to crystalline it requires one particular emotion. And that emotion is the emotion of compassion. And the reason why it is compassion is because compassion is a nullifying frequency. It is the highest frequency. Therefore, it is a frequency synonymous with the void where everything comes in and is just nullified back to raw energy. So we have one gland in our body that enables us to transmute any lower frequency energy into that frequency of compassion, and that is the thymus. So when the Nibiruans gave us a formula of compassion, it was for us to be able to learn how to apply higher dimensional ways of looking at things, a higher dimensional perspective, to be able to transmute any kind of lower frequency energy, anger, shame, guilt, blame, resentment, remorse, bitterness, into that frequency of compassion, which would then transform that piece of our DNA connected with the, uh, the, the, the emotions and turn it to crystalline. Therefore, it would hold more light. And then as we did that over and over and over again, our DNA would hold more light. While our DNA is changing, our frequency is rising, but at the same time, we're having to use these higher dimensional beliefs to, to, to be able to view these situations, these issues, uh, in a different way to be able to complete this process. So they are now becoming an ingrained way of thinking. So we're starting to think like creator gods. Do you see what's happening here? You're awakening you're evolving, you're ascending your consciousness, and you're, re, re, achi you're achieving that God conscious state that we need as multidimensional beings. We don't just want to become multidimensional, we want to become multidimensional with a God conscious way of thinking. Otherwise, we'll just be out there in the galactic community with a third dimensional way of thinking. And before you know it, because we now have the, the weaponry and the ability, we can go out and blow up planets. They didn't want that. They want us to go out there as peacekeepers, as people with a God consciousness who can establish peace. So back to the topic. Uh, this article basically just reinforces what the Nibiruans gave us many, many years ago. So I would, I hope you'll all read it. I hope you'll get as excited about it as I do. And if any, if nothing more, then it just gives you more reason to keep going with your emotional clearing. Because remember, we're, we're less than six months away from crossing the galactic equator and through that field of energy that they've now also proven emanates from the galactic core and spreads out of course across the equatorial plane. At that point, whatever we're carrying, when we move into that energy, we're going to manifest very quickly. So if we're carrying more light than, than, than otherwise, we're going to create more of a peaceful situation. So we need to dump as much as we can ahead of that. So use the formula. It will work. It will change your DNA to crystalline. And keep going with your emotional clearing. And then we will end up with the world that we want. So that's it for today. Hope you have a great week, and I will talk to you next week.